happen there as we are going into game number one here between Gambit and Nemega. Best of three, our first of the morning of the day. You excited, Tigov? <laughs> I mean, this is this is where the action's at what right now. What would you do if this... I just said to you right now, Nah, where's Division One? Get me, you know, like, what if I actually properly lent into that, like? I don't know. I could. Uh, our producer is uh, watching us right now, so <laughs> maybe you could pull off a prank. Maybe mute you for the game. I don't know. <laughs> nah, we won't do I, that. I did that myself accidentally, but nah. All right, nah. This is this is actually really mm. interesting. I like the Gambit. Is this a... is this is a series Gambit, where Nemega huh? has to win. They have to win, otherwise they're out. And Petru on the low ground towards the smoke. Gambit looking for first blood. Hello, Tusk. You're going to be surprised here with a Fissure coming in with the right clicks as well. Petru, 150 HP. Wolf trying to get some body blocks in. It's not going to be enough. The shard block. Excess Vampire can't get there. Xani can't get there. Tusk is not even going to die. There's not even a first blood coming in. That was Damn. my fault. That, like, I don't want to be too critical. All right, Panda, don't want to be too critical. But 30 seconds to battle. Did Fisher not block? You know, like he didn't. Sorry. He, God. He, what? he did Fisher not block. No, Damn. No. <laughs> Fisher, yes, block, no. You know, that's exactly what I'm seeing right there. Um, <laughs> my God, what happened to my brain? Yeah, um, he didn't just. What is happening task, with your right? brain? He didn't block him. He just kind mm. of fissured. Yeah, he through the middle yeah, just, of the path, so. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. kind of like that, you know, shower confidence. He just throws it, like, flat. The it's there. Begins. Yeah. It's like, all right. He done it for Dimaggio rather than, you know, Blockio. Good. That oh, was well. a fancy word. Can I say I'm fluent in EOs? Um, so yeah, Vampire That's true. now blocking you, you up. You are. You are. That's why you're here with me. Mate, it's happening all... again. I don't know. I think it's maybe the tea or the water here. I don't know. Something, something just hits. Water. Water. Well, you've been you've been around uh, MLP too much now. <laughs> Calling water into water. Water. Anyway, um, let's hit this game off. So we didn't get a first blood. Our bounties go two for two. Melees and Lodin picking up both of those. And let's start with our top lane. We've got uh, Snapfire Shaker versus the Venge and Morphling. What do we? notify here what is like the biggest factor that affects this lane because snaps burst is scary earth shaker needs like level two maybe level three to be like very scary in this lane curious snipe realistically, oh, but realistically there isn't any kill threat from gambit because even though you have this damage at level one through to maybe three you could deal some pressure to morphling but as soon as you get like higher levels of morphling he's just gonna shake off like, it's mainly because of Shaker support, right? He doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. Other than annoy Take from Tower. Had. Yeah. But yeah, this, I mean, this it's top lane is going to be just awkward. Just trading farm. Yeah, I guess it's going to be the same thing in mid as well. You know, like Lycan's just farming up, and then you have Batrider who can pull you a little bit. Bat can get a... a... I, w I would say a significant lead in the sense that Batrider can maybe jungle farm a tiny bit faster, but you need stacks for it, so you're going to have to do a little bit of movement here and there. Do you want to rotate with your bat early? Uh, what does the Lycan do? Lycan hits really hard, so Lycan can also farm relatively fast in the jungle too, hit that Necro, necro book early enough. The key so, thing here, though, about mid is mm -hmm. Batriders naturally want to go for their bots first before a true rotation, unless they have like the perfect yeah, yeah, yeah. rune. Um, and then that disparity in mids where Lycan can pressure tower if he gets that quick necro one from this easy farm he's getting. And this is the difficulty yep. of mid. He's, he's trying guy. Loreno for right now. A TP does come in from Aina. Cancels it. The Shaker also cancels it. Good uh, good move there from the bat. He forces two TPs out. Yeah, for sure. He forces out two TPs, but his resources now, he's going to feel kind of out of place because he doesn't have much got a bottle coming. He's got the bottle coming out. That's good. Ancred needs to be like smarter about these, these plays here. I feel like if he was level four when he made that play with the point in flame break, mm -hmm. just a little bit more kill threat, and then suddenly the Lycan's about his engagement. Top lane, looking like a kill on the Vengeful Spirit. Stun's been used, scattered blast, ready in three First seconds. Blood. A right clicks Thanks aren't going to be enough. Fun. Excess Vampire gets it, First and blood. Gambit score the first kill. to Tatake drops very low, waveform out. Just to get a few hits onto the snap and the shaker, but. Uh, Talking about so not having... Yep. It's all about the morphling. Lodin dying doesn't tactics. count, right? He's been five. Dire His deaths don't matter. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Still, a lane which uh, shouldn't have that much threat or kill potential in a sense. 
uh, does come uh, stronger for Gambit. They do pull off the first kill of the game. Natural kind of position five overstep to mark, and then sure, like we already mentioned, they uh, have yeah. the damage. It's just they don't have the damage to morphling, but of course they have the damage to go away. Uh, a, a, a vengeful spirit. Mm. And even despite that one kill going their way, Nemiga is pulling off a triple net worth lead right now, which is a great start for them. 22 to 13 for the Batrider uh, against the Lycan. Then we have 19 versus 13. So you have the Morphling leading the uh, Snapfire. And Silence is a, also doing a decent job. We have a uh, yeah, an absolutely devastating situation happening at the bottom. Let's just watch Kasani get jumped real quick and he dives away. Yeah, again. Snowball. Already uses Time Walk. Shard block is available from Petru, and it's a beautiful one as well. Chosen one gets that minus two. So the issue there two. was the AA rotated towards mid and sat here for 20 seconds trying to secure the bot rune. The lane had already been pushed in towards the Tusk Clan, mm. so the pool camp was blocked, so the void was out on an island. He was trying to eke as much XP as he could standing deep, but then that allowed for that chase down to occur. AA then TP'd back in yeah. after trying to secure the rune. Fundamentally, just kind of that disparity between resetting that safe lane before making move it just killed off the void basically yeah one to one and we have our five minute bounty spawning in 10 seconds petru and kasani having a little brawl over the bounties by the looks of it kasani driving tusk away tusk still has that snowball stun which he really wants to use and he's going to drive yes. away the Gambit Middle Hero Tower securing the bottom runes. <laughs> Lauren F is Gonna be a casual out. two for two. Meanwhile, yeah. Oh. And he actually gets out with like, what? 50 HP or less? So close. Oh, there's a courier for Aincrab, but he <laughs> can't get to it. That was, the, that was the boots on the Shaker. If he killed the courier with the Shaker not getting his boots, that would have been rough. We love to use the word rough. Blimey. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, Dota's a rough game. It's a hard game, too. It is. Could be a real smart cookie to play it. Smart cookie. Ksani taking a bit of a bully here from the Chosen One. Here comes the shards and the vision coming out. The stun from the snowball. Ksani going down. And you did talk about this bully lane of the Tusk Silencer. So it has worked for Nemiga in the past, I guess. Um, Looking great for them right now. Yeah, this was uh, is down lost top. to you yesterday against Live to Win. And they just instantly ah. just copied the, the lane was like, lads, we're doing this ourselves. <laughs> Seems to work out great for them. Also, Tataki gets a kill on Melee's in top. So Nemiga not only doing great on the CS department, but they also get a trade-in kill from this top lane, which is great for them. Yeah, and when I mentioned during the draft about what this Lycan was meant to achieve, this early pressure mm -hmm. from the Batrider, it's annoying for Lycan, but the key thing is we haven't seen the Lycan die. He is going to get to his timing of Necrobook. So when we see Batrider want to make map movements, that mid lane pressure will come into play. It will open up Gambit's game to kind of allow the Void to farm behind that pocket of aggression. But so yep. far, so good. Really good. Oh, very scary scatter blaster from Melee's almost kills off the Vengeful Spirit. Is Lady not done? Melee's could turn around yeah. with a kill. I mean, you could have just turned around with another scatter blast. That's a pivot <laughs> swing, shotgun spin, bang, yeah. dead. One one eighty no scope. Exactly. Well, I think he might be scoping in at that point. Yeah. The one eighty part he's got down to. Oh, what a game actually. Radiance middle Child tower is under attack. Yeah, we uh we did have those thoughts before. So, a uh, bit of action here in bottom. Petru, stun, beautiful fissure there from Excess Vampire. Not only blocking the tusk, but also uh, getting some tower hits on the silencer, who has to salve under the tower. Vampire's a cheeky little devil there. They were like, this void had such a terrible lane. And then the the, the Earthshake is like, Dong, the tusk is mine. And the sun is like, Please. Yeah. I'm yep, and they're gonna you. deliver the slap once again. So the silencer getting corner from both directions, and Xani. Oh, once you. again, that's it. The shaker really making it work for Gambit here. So two quick kills in succession. Not only kills with the the defensive play, but does a tiny little roll around around the trees. It's like, all right, I'm gonna go wrap around, throw this fissure at your face. Oh, we got a second kill.
key thing here is uh, AA support is very aggressive. Void naturally can be aggressive with levels, and you need that kind of plus one factor to really offset the lane and naturally tough yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah. So they're very kind of the two of them alone are devastating. So when you bring mm. in that shaker, numbers advantage. It starts allowing the AA to connect his spells as well. So yeah, overall Gambit just kind of playing around what. If they had left Void alone for even longer, this tower would fall. Yep. Void and they're going to try maybe again in this bot lane or they not. Sonny, Chrono catches the tusk at least inside it. And we hear a Lycan coming around and he's going straight towards the Chosen One. You will find the silencer diving under the tower. There's a courier flying by, but you don't need to go for that. There's two TPs coming in. Aincrad comes in with a Batrider DD. Oh, oh look dies. at that. The silencer just gets chewed down. They're trying to stun the wolves. There's not going to be enough. Lodin. Oh, he barely survives. 40 HP is going to be what ha is going to be remaining on this vengeful spirit. As Gambit, they find one kill. They force a support away from lane. Good plays there. Good and plays. And that's how used. This, this Lycan is, right, in terms of the... Mm. The zero commit fight where he dives a silencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lets his little summons chase and he runs away. And his summons are just beating down and they have that's kind of the good thing they have to enable this lichen. They have this kind of like long range fissure, right? And Rage naturally like the hero that has big disconnects from his team. And if you can layer yeah. a stun from afar, it allows for the kind of the neck row the wall to apply their damage. Oksani could potentially try, but you know, still the lasso threats there. Trying to be annoying. Yeah, if he if he got like a bash on high ground, could have maybe tried to uh, time walk on the low ground, but you know, still the threat of uh, Melee is actually getting stunned up here. That's going to be a kill for Nemega. Nice Fissure, Scatter Blast, Cookie, Melee. Oh, he wanted to throw the Mortimus kisses on the high ground, but... Don't worry, he was just role-playing Petra at the Banyu Rooms. He just knew that 10 minutes later he wanted to make the same play, test out his ability. Role-playing Petru. I like that. Lycan's testing out his with a, a haste rune. Aincrad. Going for some aggressive deep vision information. Finds Loreno. Lasso. Nice fissure from Exus Vampire. And Batrider almost dies with that lasso being used. Cookie stun. Mortimer's kisses. Beautiful from Melees. And, the global, and Loreno what, what gets the, the kill even. What was that global? Why did they? What? Why? What? Well. Chosen one's dead. What's oh, going God. on? What's happening? Death and destruction. Nemega, you had a great start for the game. Now it's just coming apart. But this is what, what happened. Why? This is what I meant about the the, the the draft style from Gambit, right? This like and you, kind of, you could argue that Ankred's the one tower. going aggressive. They're forcing it out, but it's the idea of pressure the Lycan. And now look at this void, right? He had a terrible lane, Dyer's absolutely atrocious, but he's attack. now able to farm behind the lineup of Gambit. The and if they continue doing that, then defenses. they're going to easily get to the timing where they can deal with this kind of single core and Amiga lineup. Because Baron and Natural yeah, yeah, yeah. off yeah. without these pickoffs. The sun is off lane. He never itemizes too greedy. Look at like top. Look at top. Look at top. Look at I'm top. looking. I'm staring. Tatake is teeping out though. Ksani was like, I'm going to chrono. You're going to throw your ice blast. Melee is just going to go like, I'm going to throw a cookie or something tower. inside that chrono. But Morphling goes but out. The, they're going to the sacrifice the top tower. Sani still has his TP up. This was a walking rotation. Melas has TP in seven. Like if they wanted to, they could maybe defend bottom to some degree, especially with no global. It does feel a bit forced. Just there is an ice blast coming through. Map. They're looking for it. Just a tiny bit of damage onto the chosen one. A bit. Dyer's top tower and Lycan's about to attack. beat Necro 3. 12 minutes life. in. Next. You have to chase That's right. anyone. Tower is under attack. Yeah. All right, timing. Yeah does the job, you know what I mean? Yeah. Lycan 2-0, and o, Shaker 2-0. and o. Surprisingly, Ancient Apparition hasn't died at all. I was thinking that AA, being a squishy hero as he is, doesn't have the greatest movement speed either. 330 with boots on. Like, he should be dying like once, twice, maybe. Oh, Tatake! Oh, no, 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 no! Is he gonna... Die to the, he's gonna die to it. Xani's dead Radius to Petru though. Tataki, one fast. tick from the ulti. He's oh. dead. Aina gets the kill. Long range snipe with the ward placed down here into the ancient cap. Doesn't get the ancients farmed up. They lose a mid tower. They might have lost the faces void, but it's a carry for a carry kill nevertheless and a tower objective on top of that. I was about to say, Gambit's lineup is really good at making aggression like here. 
Therefore, good space to farm is like here. Radiance bottom tower is here. So yeah, fast. a bit of a uh, kind of a misplaced uh, void, but alas, you are seeing, I think, beautiful usage of both attack. vision and ultimate from AA. No yep, and a chrono I used up in top. Oh, There's an ice blast coming in. There's a oh the global can't use the oh, ice blast. Can't release that is it, a mate, good can one. You? His hands That's are tied. A, his hands are tied. Can't do anything but yet. It doesn't matter though. They're getting to get Roshan. They're going to yeah. get Roshan. It's going to be tickety boo for Gambit right now. They're hitting all the times the that they want. Sure, yeah. you do have a couple awkward deaths on the void now, but realistically, the still, game plan yeah. is still the same. Look at the it map is. size for Namiga. They're just kind of hugging. Not even like attack. a third of the gate of screen. It's like, oh, the map, sorry. Mm. And also 13 and a half minutes on Roshan. Nemiga really need to step up their tempo here. Otherwise, this game is going to roll out of their hands and they can't affect the outcome. But also, you have to have to fight against an Aegis, which makes things even more difficult here for Nemiga. Like the issue is, where's your DD damage? Like an, Look at yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. Got, How do you fight them? Yasha plus a cloak, morbid, and a red. Like, he's just kind of in farm mode right now. You're, you're off lane silence and trying to get a, a four staff. Your batter is going for a blink. Ayn is, in fairness, dying. Ayn is dead, though. Yeah. This casual support kill. Yeah, very casual. But, like, that's about it, right? Like, we're not seeing Amiga hit a timing where they're going to do any damage within the next at least five minutes outside of the connecting depends. on the spells, right? Yep, depends. I mean, Batrider is about to finish that blink dagger. 400 gold. And they can maybe do some things with the Silencer and the Tusk. So I think these three guys can definitely make things happen. Venge is there for, you know, mental support, I guess. We hit our 15-minute marker. Net worth is tied, but it definitely feels like Gambit has the uh, stronger edge right now. Nemeka can still affect the outcome of this game in the, the few minutes to come. So I think these are, like, the most important minutes of their game right now. Not to die. Into an Aegis with all the team fight available other than Chrono for the next 40 seconds. So for Namiga, they're going to look to pick up their key Dyer's items, hope to see Gambit attack. maybe split mm. too far Radiant's on the map and look for these pickups where attack. they have numbers advantage. Still a very yeah. difficult position to be in. Dyer's Blink is like coming. Is oh, and pausing as well. Ooh. All right, they, Lag. they Radiant has no vision in this entire area, so this Blink dagger is still going to be an advantage for Nemiga. So as we come out of this pause at some point, I'm really looking, I'm just keeping my eyes open on Aincrad. What does he want to do? Who does he want to jump on? And when does he do it? Because these are like the big questions of how do you reveal this Blink Dagger? Can you reveal a kill? And if you do, do Gambit get to respond right after? Say, for example, 20 seconds for a Chronosphere. So if they don't initiate right away, if they don't get the faces void first, you know, Key it's just questions here is in my the, head. The, the natural play for Gambit is to take top tower, reset as five, and push back into this area to then control to take all their outer towers. So you do have a window in which the Amiga can look for these, these kind of pick off plays, but again, it's very yeah. difficult because you can already. Alright, I cry reveals this blink. They are rotating. Yeah, they're rotating back together. They're positioning bot lane and they're ready for this fight. Lauren F has the TV Minecraft just revealed his blink. They're sitting straight under an obs ward. So the entire Nemiga lineup has been spotted. They feel like they're going, they're just going all in at this. Top tower is under attack. And yet they're not. For its life. All right, well, uh, realistically, they can't, though, because they don't know where the light was Ooh, that entire it. time. All right, oh, Lodin tanks, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he tanks the smoke. It's kind of cool, cool, to be fair. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, since they, I, I'm not sure if that was a completely planned move that they were sitting under the ward, and they're like, "All right, let's give them false info in the sense that we are here, but in the end, we're not really going to stay here. We're not going to push this tower. We back away. Lodine, go tank the smoke or something." And he does. Like that could have been textbook perfect, but we don't know what's going on with the comms. But now we have that reset from Gambit. They've taken the top side of the map. They now just need to look towards mid and bottom. Like, this entire top portion of the map is just complete free farm for Gambit if they want, because there's no objective yep. for Amiga to play around. And equally, there's no objective for Gambit to look for. So, this is now going to be kind of a farming corner. And all the fighting should be happening in mid to bot lane. 
Pad Rider going for is not a Shiva's guard. Looks all yeah, bad. Yeah, he is, yeah. Cheeky little Shiva's, mate. He, yeah, a bit of slow, a bit of vision. I think that's all they really need for the Morphling is have the vision for the fights, oh know where God, your enemies Panda. are, a bit of attack slow, anchor. It. The, 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 the snapfire ags lobbing in a lichen who's literally ulted. <laughs> and then it's just like necros, wolves, everything appears, right? Like, what the? That's ah, going to be amazing. True. Yeah, it's like, what, what would be the best? Uh, how, how can you compare that to something? Um, I, can, I really can't find a comparison for what, what, what does that really look like. Lobbing up. Just see, okay? You can, it can yeah. be one of those pieces of armor. I guess, I guess that's like... Their own opinion. I, I, I know this is for someone who's squeamish. This might be very weird, but... You know, like, when you see, like, this big black blob in the corner of your, like, apartment's, like, roof or something, then you poke it, and then, like, a million spiders just spread it around. Ah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I guess that's kind of like, yeah, you just lob in the like and you spawn the mobs. Mele is an Nexus vampire looking for the fissure, but Ankrat manages to blink out to safety. Aegis is running out in 10 seconds, which was what Gambit were looking for. The stun does connect. They have a purge. There's a shape shift coming in. Ankrat, there's the Skullable Silence coming in as well. The stun will connect on Lorainoff, and the TP's away. Everybody from Nemega is like, bye bye. Three teleports back home, and they force the global, but they also force the shape shift. And that's the trade that Namiga will be looking for. And it's kind of... But that that's what I mentioned, right? Like, Lycan will happily trade his ultimate for global. Because now Namiga have lost such a big component, the Void comes into play. You still have Chrono, you still have Slam, AA Blast, and that's why... This and they're Lycan smoked up. Look at this. Minecraft. Gets the... Oh, he gets Ksani. And they're going to catch the faces Void, but do they have damage for it? Yes, they do. They take him out. The Ice Blast comes out. The Snowball from Petru connecting onto Aina. Also onto Melee. So Sapphire being hit as they get the swap as well onto Aina. Pushing him backwards. Nemega getting a chance to do a lot of damage here. Melee should be going down and will do so. So does Aina. And Nemega find three kills... Looking for more, but the Shaker and the Lycan are already out. A great play from Nemega with the smoke on the side, finding the big crucial target, which would have made their team fight horrible. They get yeah. the faces void first, no chrono, no nothing. Yeah, that was that was actually really good for Nemega because as soon as I saw like global used, I expected Gambit to group back up and try and utilize their big team fight. That's what I was mentioning. But then Nemega, they have this high ground vision of the entry to the jungle and it allows for that instant jump onto the void. Killing no. Tusk now dying, trying to go for the yeah. bounty rune at 20. Like, Namiga, they identified the one hero they have to kill, because if they kill the void, suddenly their ability to team fight confidently is somewhat dismantled. So, Namiga, they have the perfect initiation of they remove team fight because of global v lycan ult, then they lasso the, the void. The issue is, those moments, they are perfect for Namiga, but how often can they be replicated? Like, can we see another fight where the silencer is able to mass TP out his entire team because he layers that perfect global? Is Gambit going to be positioned poorly where the Void just instantly dies once again? Like, this is right now, this we could maybe argue the standing factor, but we are seeing a disparity in kind of adhesion between the carry, who is the standing, to the rest of Gambit. It's more pressure on Namiga right now to kind of force the, the pressure because they're the ones kind of hitting a slight stride but oh, if they get nice over -aggressive, global does come out but the chrono will connect batrider tanking a lot of this damage the swap save from lodine and a cookie will stun the, uh, the vengeful spirit but lodine is out nevertheless they save the batrider with this play they don't have the manpower though to take the reinitiation for nemiga they will su they will suffice we'll give the venge away we save the bat we force the big ulti we use the global defensively here they're happy with it And a smoke. Gambit looking for an instant reinitiation right after. Instead of Nemega, who are still scattered. I guess this was what they were looking for, that they smoke up. I think they see the Chosen One. Yep, they do. They see the Silencer. Do they want to get him? Shapeshift? Yeah, they, they're going to go. Though, there's a lasso at the same time on Melee's. And this kind of halts everything because the Chosen One, his TP gets cancelled. Aincrad is dead. And now the silencer is also going to die. So, uh, this is all right. All I can say is a bit of an awkward timing here because that smoke was happening and Batrider had no idea. He had his own thoughts on his mind. It totally didn't pay off. Like how often do you get the, the perfect team fight that the Amiga just had, right? Like this was an example of a failed initiation. The, the Batrider just gets all to Chrono. 
We have uh, Void participating in the fights now. We have to see that Ben swap in, the, the global on top, and then we have that chase down from Gambit, being able to utilize their kind of gap close that they have within their lineup. And Amiga, if they don't hit the perfect lasso, if they don't hit the perfect global, their ability to team fight Gambit it is troublesome because it's so easy to run in with the Lycan, to hit a Chrono, to hit the Slam. So in Amiga, they need to really play around their vision Dyer's because they have been doing really well. And also it maybe utilize some smokes now stand. because I can see the game getting harder where if Gambit get one more good team fight, maybe even next to Aegis, they can mm -hmm. play around their cooldowns where they find the fight, win the fight, reset. But again, it's all about can this Void be in position that he doesn't get instantly picked off. That's how that's the Amiga's entry back into this game. There is a uh, BKB up on this Faces Void. MKB coming up next. So we do have a lot of damage kicking in for the Faces Void soon. Though. Gobble up. All right, casual gobble up. Bait here in the mid lane, just pushing out the wave. And a smoke from Gambit. But Nemega, they have a decent position to hold on to. Gambit, like, all right, let's go. Ro Rush is going to spawn in three seconds. What the heck? They have perfect vision here but as well. The double wards on the jungle. Oh, Lodin and there's Lodin. Tanks the smoke. He, he, he sees that Roche is also up. So if Lodin can escape somehow, nope, no. not gonna happen. Lycan's uh, minions, creeps, units, whatever he has, everything is gonna be enough. Technically, you could call them minions, Dyer's necro units, and wolves slain. and everything. Your own little uh, to, uh, summons, to yeah. Circumvent and dodge the whole LOL issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to. Like, that's the mm. problem. Like, I want to call them minions because they belong to someone, but, you know, I don't want to get into that wrong game area here. Not at all. But with the Venge dying, they don't actually have any kind of save potential for the turn. Yeah. So they don't really have a contestant. In theory, it was a good kind of smoke break, tank it. But because you're outside Roshan, because you can't be alive for the contest then even with buyback it does give away free roshan so in principle good idea from lodin but unfortunately i get free ages for gathered though nemig is spreading out pretty nicely here around the map doing what they can as gambit's already uh picked up their second ages of the game the cheese on the lycan 2400 HP to fight through. Uh, okay. Shapeshift. Shaker's dead. All right. So that's a start. Here comes the Mortimus Kisses. Fat Rider will get to use the Illusion Rune. Root it up with the web still burning up and a lot of damage. And that Global Silence is not going to be enough. But Lorainoff doesn't even die to the shotgun combo here from the Morphling. And has to back away because Sani's like, I want to chrono someone, yeah, but do I even need to? Nose. Because they're just dying at our hands right now. Lorraine of Xani dishing out hits. Petru dies as well. Four heroes down from Nemega. You thought you got the shaker? You ended up paying a lot more for it. Dyer's middle tower is under got run down, didn't they? No the How many times have you seen a fight Dyer's where you're the ones being aggressed on? You can't position correctly in this Batrider. There were some cute plays within it. He had the illusion room to get rid of the purge from the necro. Yeah, had the, but then he got webbed right yeah. after. And then you have to ask yourself, was the global allowed for the entire Mortimus Kisses to go off? Was it on cooldown? I don't think it was, but... It wasn't, Still, yeah. it's just, there's that fact that everything that Amiga's doing, their lineup is about being proactive. As soon as they're put on the defensive, they're suddenly in kind of looking for the high ground plays where they get that jump on that siege. But right now, Gambit are just utilizing their heroes really well. Just pressure yeah, yeah. Amiga. Incorrect. Looking for another. Gets the last zone on Melee's. Aina, Exus Vampire following up. They will quickly get away yeah, with no the Snapfire bro. kill. That's no. Pickoff. Nemega hoping to find another. It's Pickoff, but I think they would love to get more. They can't, though. At least they get to deward their uh, mid camp. And uh, more importantly for Melez, aka Snapfire, just completed the Lotus Orb during his death, so we'll be able to mitigate that jump from uh, from Amiga, especially when you have, for example, Void being your Siege, or even Lycan being your Siege. You apply that Lotus Orb to them, it'll completely remove Batrider from having that kind of jump and disconnect to take away the uh, said hero with Lasso, so yeah. Nice Radiant Scan, though completely in, in 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 the middle of nothing and they're like all right battery is it loreno pop shapeshift they see tusk he's a keen bean oh 
He just blinks out and he's gonna be fine. Oh, yep. oh man, my, that oh, was man. very close from Exus Vampire, but it's that not gonna be enough. That wasn't close at all. That was. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> that was. Yeah. That's right. not even close. Mate, put your glasses on. Oh, a uh, good bait from the shapeshift. Thought that that was such a high IQ play with the scan as well. They're like, all right, somebody's gonna be in lane. Then they spotted Petru in the jungle, and I was like, all right, is this the guy we just spotted? Oh, there's a bat rider. Like, we, we can't get the bat rider. We'll try and kill the the tusk. Tusk just blinks away. It's like, all right, see you guys. At least Petru's got uh, on the positive side less deaths than I think he did yesterday, so he's uh, definitely feeling it today. Feeling a little bit better. But right yep. now, Gambit, they're kind of playing around the fact that they they Illusion. really need to pick off before going high ground. Because mm -hmm. I think it's way too easy for Namiga to, to punish that kind of entry into that tier 3 area, especially when you don't have. You don't have clean building damage yet. You have the Lycan Shaw of all his uh, summons, but. It's not that simple as a as a win, like an actual farmed core doing it himself. So, yeah, yeah. Gambit are kind of scared to want to go straight away for the for the end, not for the end for the for the barracks. No. Yeah, it's like the, the the classic high ground dilemma. How do we get there when we're ahead? <laughs> always, always difficult to crack the defense of the other. Xani's uh, pushing up the bottom lane. There's a silencer in the trees. Hoping to cut the waves. Got some. Uh, he's got some tinker wards placed down. Chill it. Look at him. Yeah. Having the time oh. of his life. Observer looks at just him for smoke. one second. He senses. Oh, don't look at me. Go. Uh. Well, all he needs to do. All he needs to do is just press R. Tatake reveals himself in the mid lane. There's a faceless void still sitting in bottom, also hiding in the trees. While Nemiga, scouting ahead, Batrider wants to find someone, but they see the burn. They see the burn. The trees are dying. There's Aegis some fire out. on the ground. Aegis is out. Yep, this is the timing. Is it? Firefly is out. Sonic, Faces void is away. Team. Oh, he's so close to that ward. Oh my god. If he just stepped to like one unit more to the left, that hmm. entire Nemiga team would have flooded in. Oh, he's going to walk into the ward. All right, look at the mini. Oh, he's not. Oh my god. Ah! The Miga was so close to finding the void. Tower hopes for aid. Just can't, can't find him. That was some mini map casting, by the way. If uh, oh that there was, it is. That they was. see the ward. All right, are they gonna flood in? Come on, Amiga. You don't have a smoke. All right, doesn't matter. Fight yeah, off. They, they do, they do. They have one uh, Avengers backpack, but they're yeah, like, all right, boys, what do we do? Do, do we go? What do we do, guys? Do we go? Do we do? What do we do? We. <laughs> it's like panic. Help. Still not. He's got a second smoke now, but they're both in his backpack. Nope, yeah, alright. The, the fake hype. Gone. The play's completely yeah, gone. Yeah, it's, it's right. fake hype now. You could've just asked me, Panda, alright? You could've just asked me. I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting for him to move that into his active inventory because he's got all of his teammates around him. And it's like, are they going? No, they're not, are they? But then Petru has his own Invis rune. I was like, alright, we don't need to smoke if we have one Invis guy. Setting up for mid. They don't have any vision across the river though. They see the Necro units running around. Lorraine off on the other side. It honestly feels like Gambit bit. is just farming up their own side of the map, waiting for Roshan just to kind of get the, uh, the Ags, potentially. Um, well, that'll be kind of cool if they uh, put the Ags on the like and put it on the Void, so then you have them both running around. Is it good? Mm. Probably not. Not as good as like an Ursa of the uh, Lycan Ags. Too bad. Yeah. Just kind of waiting right now. We are. Definitely at the waiting phase. 31 minutes played. Gambit with a 5,000 gold lead. 18 to 11 on the kill boards, which doesn't really tell you the whole story of the game. Loranoff, 8, 0, and 3. Still unkilled on this Lycan. Good start for him. We got the stand-in Xani. 3, 4, and 4 with the faces void. Still uh, working his way towards that MKB. Wait. That? No, wait. Shadow Blade. It's a shadow blade. Yeah, he's he's changed it up. All right, so no MKB shadow blade incoming. He's very much trying to be like the enabling void now. Vive the fight, start the fight with Chrono, layering the damage on top. Mm. And I respect that. I do because after the start of his game, he, he never really had a good start. So he's now basically playing to prop up and elevate the rest of the gambit. And like I said, it's nice to see some variation. And now, he, now he's lined up an MKB now. Oh, get out of here. I don't want to see this. I want to see that shadow Come on, Sonny. 
Hey. I want I want Yeah, the Shadow Blade I could have liked, but now he's back to MKB again. It's like, nope. Sad face indeed. Sad Pet face. Petru BKB, Batrider BKB, Tatake, Scotty, and Venge with a Solar Crest coming up. So big, big, big items. Still uh, quite some time away from all of those. Now we see... Wait, who had the Blink Dagger lined up? Who had a Blink? Oh, it's on the Snapfire. All right, yeah, if that makes sense. Yep. Pretty standard stuff. Yeah. Also, it helps when the global comes in, just blink away and you can disconnect even further. This morphling is getting to the point of being very scary. I think um, probably looking at satanic plus maybe butterfly and then it's the, the unkillable morphling. Yeah. You might not go for butterfly if the void does complete the MKB in the end. Garani has butterfly tabbed in. Yeah, and now, now he's going for shadow blade. Come on. So what is this? Kasani. Okay, he bought, okay he, bought the, he bought the shadow blade. All right, so... No MKB, not for now. Yeah, this is one of those few games where we don't really have a lot of kills, and also put it bluntly, not enough action. Like, I agree. I don't want to say the word, but like, <laughs> I'm getting close to saying it's a bit boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to I mean, fight. We're getting close to it. We're Kill something. It. All I right. beg. Basher on Lycan. Shadow Blade on the faces void. Now something. Lycan, oh, sorry, Melee's actually has a. Was that a Lincoln pop? No. All right, so it might have been just me. I saw the Lotus Orb on the Snapfire, but it looked like he had a cast on the Lincoln's buff from Ksani, but uh, still... All right, I, f I feel like if you spend enough time outside Roshan, you should, like, something bad should happen to you because you're literally waiting Eventually. for it. Eventually. Like, I think, like, little Roshan kind of copy should come out and just, like, start slapping them. Like, go away, yep. shoo. I'll tell you when I'm alive. Roshan's up right now. now. Ugh. AA gets right, the finally. info. Fight, 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 right, fight, right next fight. to the Roche pit. They see, they see the fire path down on the ground. They're smoked up. Trying to take the high ground advantage. Ina in the front line. Glimmer capes quickly up. He spots the Bat Rider. The Fissure doesn't quite connect though. And the Gobble up. Oh, Xani. Looking for some targets to hit with the Chrono Snowball. Save. There's a Shapeshift coming in as well. Gambit aren't getting anything happening right now. The blocks with the shards. They can't get to the high ground. They're wondering why can't we cross this bridge right here. Petro gets hit by the cookie. Two wolves still slapping away. Another sw swap coming in from Lodin. He does get the web out. And there's the global silence. What happens now? So spread it. Nemega, are they actually getting away with it? Xani, first hit bash onto the Bat Rider with the Fissure. Mortimer's kisses, and the Bat Finally. should go down and Finally. will. Oh. God damn, that took forever. Oh my god, oh, it's so refreshing seeing someone have to. <sighs> All right, I understand why they're not fighting if, if it's that difficult <laughs> to that get was to the so opponent. Difficult. Oh my god. But they get oh. Roche. Third Roche, all for Gambit. Axe buff, cheese, oh, another. Axe. Yes, yes. Who right. takes it, by the way? Yes. I really Void. hope. I really hope. Yeah, I guess the Void should just take it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I'm over Blink bash. Jump. Yep, he got it. He got there, it. He there got we it. Go. Here we go. Four. Yes. Three, two, one. Free money. Dollar bills. Dropping. Bish bosh. Yeah. 25 seconds for the Bat Rider to be back up and Nemega are running away from Gambit's wrath around the map. Xani very deep. MTP coming in from the Shaker. Petru oh, spots the Morphling. The he finds the Morphling. There we go. Blink bash in. Blink. Time walk bash in. That's the Axe buff stun. And there's the Morphling getting hit by the Chrono. But Lodin is right there. So yeah. You kill the loading the support, the but they, they can they get to Tatake? A lot of backup coming in, and they just might be enough Fissure. Stun looking for it. Waveform. Stun comes out. There's a flame break and a Go web on. coming out as well. And that's the end of Tatake's Morphling. Gobble up. Hoping to find someone here in lane, but, but, but the, the Batrider's right already moved out. You've got this bottom crew wave already pushed in. You've got Anchor just panicking. Guys, don't worry, attack. I'm getting mid wave. Gambit really? used fortification just to keep it alive. Getting everything. Fight. Yep, we'll kill it off, so... Great pick off. Where are you gonna Gambit. push? But exactly. Where are you gonna push? You're gonna backdoor because you're a Lycan with an AC and an Echo 3. Congratulations. Game yeah. 7.28. Where you at? It will be a ruin. Nah, bless it. Nah, that was, uh, that was pretty chill. Also, kind of meme aside, pre Roshan, the game was at like kind of Dyer's a very deciding point where easily attack. it could have been the Mega with that big decisive play. They get the agents themselves, and Morphling is slowly There's getting to the point of being very hard to kill. If he has like satanic BKB, right? It's another 
Yeah, yeah. 10k gold, and then he's like the raid boss from Amiga. The issue is there, kind of, as we got into that kind of patient point in the game, they weren't able to find the break they needed, and it allowed Gambit just to eventually whittle down on Amiga's positioning and then eventually take the Aegis. So, yep. oh, they spot the bat. Gobble, nice gobble up from melee. It's almost that melee range as well. Einkrad caught in the trees. In this room, where's your detection? He has got dust. Oh, wait, he's, he's got he's just what? TPing. What? what? He just what? Wait, what? No, he wasn't even invis then. He was just TPing out in front. Did they? Yeah, not... because he, he broke the invis with the TP scroll. Yes, yeah, so I mean. But how did they? How? Yeah, is it was he on the cliff? If that is that a cliff spot? Cheeky. Oh, glitch. Oh, uh, Vampire just uh, showed it for us. Uh, Thanks, man. Oh, all right, wow. So our, our production is... has told that there's apparently something that in there that's not supposed to be there. Cool. Well, that makes nice. sense, I guess. Thanks. That was cool. I mean, nice. it, it's obviously not a bug. That's a feature. All right. So... I got MVP for that TP. Thank you. I was about yeah, to you say learn, like, Every day you learn something new in the world of Dota. I don't think Vampire is that blind. Something must be right here. Something must be wrong. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I was just like, how does the Shaker not see him? Because I'm right next to him. I was like, what the heck? Anyway, back to the action. Smoke up behind from Nemega. They've got a very stacked up Gambit right next to each other. It's jump on Aina. And they also get the lasso. The damage comes out. Aina's out first. And they will also look on Lorraine off to Take. Dishing out hits onto the faces. Void wants to get that Aegis out of the way, but won't be able to. At, at least not yet. Petru gets bashed up right away by Xani. Chrono's there. Looking for it. There's the echo from Excess Vampire. Followed up with the Mortimer's kisses. And Tataki slowly melting down with this Morphling. There's the goal up won't quite connect those swap from Lodine to save the morph but it's not going to be enough as the ice blast is going to be there that nice time walk bash comes out from Sani on two Lodine with a hundred HP able to walk out Nemega looking for a response gets excess vampire as they force the buybacks they need to find more the right click does connect onto the faces void so he's slowed up still being chased but that shadow walk he manages to get out with the safety of that invis of the shadow blade they really made Nemega pay for that. Yeah, but they also paid on the side of Gambit where... Actually, they, they did, yeah. That was Buy an Aegis like fight. It. Their AA instantly died. Their Lycan died, bought back, tried entering the fight, couldn't. So that, this was like a big timing. And especially when you're 18k up, you'd expect the fight to be a lot, a lot easier for, for Gambit. But a beautiful wraparound from Amiga just put in a great choke point on them and the vision as well. They yeah, committed yeah. so heavily with this warding from, from Lodin to enable that fight. The question is, when Gambit reset, all they have to do now is kill Morphling. They have this kind of win condition, which is kill Morph, no buyback, we win the game. So Namigo have to be very well positioned. Lodin needs to be so well positioned to always have these swaps come into play. Because like I said, if Morphling dies now, within the next like seven minutes, this game is just... has been looking like a gambit favorite game for quite some time at least in the way that they've been playing it Amiga has not been really able to uh, connect the way that they would want to they're still in it but not for long if they fail this next fight it might just be over they are taking the high ground advantage with the smoke gonna walk into melees off lane snap fire been spotted Einkrat, shiva's guard use okay not going on the snap instead they're gonna <laughs> stun up the illusion lasso does connect and they're gonna find a snap kill Goes for Tatake. One piece uh, closer to Satanic. They're having some complications for closing out this game. Some, uh, simply, I think, positioning and team fight and perfect kind of wraparounds from Amigo really allowing them to to make it feel like the game is not 16k in the, in the lead to the Gambit. Smoking up no, again. I mean, like, they're looking I, to I, I, I guess, yeah. Are at the point where they're like you know slowly loosening up the gas on the pedal but i think yeah, it's, it's time to hit the pedal control. to the metal though lodin on the low ground they're gonna find petru well shapeshift does come out snowball he's still got that blink available can get to safety but doesn't really get the perfect blink out either no. just walks straight uh, blink straight under hell races the vision. sorry Gambit vision die creeps top look at bottom mid already getting pushed in by these illusions like Gambit, they're finding these support kills, sure, but they're not leading to anything right now. So Namiga are doing a Agreed. very good job at kind of stemming the bleeding. I mean, it's a, it's a war of an attrition in some sense. 
Haste. Sani, haste it up. In. Shadow Blade it up. He's got low Dean. Can he find something more? All right. Casual sentry ward down. He's like, okay. Somebody's probably Holy here. Fuck. He's exactly going to be there. All right, cool. Like, kill. Support. All right. Yeah, another kill. Yeah, what do we do with it? 75 this seconds. This is the key thing, though. No? 80 seconds without Vengeful Spirit. There's no swap in play. It allows for them to siege high ground. Morphlin cannot be too confident in this fight because if he dies, don't forget, still no buyback. Gambit identify this, they're running down mid. If this was not as close as it was, that death on Venge, sure, it's whatever. But at this point, it's so critical, this could be a game-losing death simply because that Morphling doesn't have a defensive mechanism now. Cobble up is going to be up in 15 seconds. Lasso, they break the Lincolns. They've got a Lotus Orb, not quite on time. But the face is void, and he's going to go down. Or is he? Gets the time walk off just in time. The Chrono as well. Aincrad coming in with the buyback, but they do have to talk inside the Chrono. The Ice Blast will connect as well, and it should be enough. Is it going to be? Nope. To talk, it gets the way form out. The Snowball from Petra going deep, deep, deep behind enemy lines. Can't still find that face is void. And there's a BKB Snapfire. Runs out, but Petra will lead away the troops. Lorena finds a little corner. And Aincrad can only watch. Cobble up comes out as well. Aincrad. 750 crit from Lorenov in the face of the Batrider. Does a decent amount of damage though, but it's not gonna be enough. But the Lycan in trouble. Cheese is there. BKB still there. Nemiga. Assess the situation. I was like, alright, we kinda can't go there. Though, it's a chrono down, it's a shapeshift down. A bit of time for Nemiga. Yeah, but that's another buyback. That's a bad buyback though. Another buyback feels a lot better now for Gambit. They actually were able to kind of siege and without like, too many resources lost, but it does show how important it is Lodine doesn't die before a fight breaks down. Like, it's Tower so critical he's attack. able to save his morph. That entire fight, all he did was on morphling, get chronoed, run away. That could have been so much worse. Very scary position now for me. Roshan number four. Okay. 40, Lycan, are 44 you minutes the in. Ags to... Illusion. That would be... I meant like Lycan eats it. the Ags and then turns Void into a wolf. Yeah. Or yeah, I mean Lycan Ags. No, A is Lycan Ags or AA. I mean both are decent, but... Uh... Nah, give it to Lycan. Only Lycan. Looks like it. We'll take it for himself. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and, and a quick kill on Petru. Shapeshift. All right, no, it's actually the, the bitten uh, faces void with the shadow blade. There's an end of his void coming right your way, running around like a wolf. Aincrad, oh that, that, that wolf can jump. That wolf can definitely jump. Can't catch you got anyone, void though. Becoming a wolf. You've got, um, oh, uh, man, he bashes and crits. That's disgusting. Oh, okay. That is... Uh, pardon my British, but that's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> All right, never that doing is... that one again. So yeah, Kasani, very strong. <laughs> yeah, now what's the cooldown on that thing? 30, 72 seconds in total, 30 seconds now. That's, that's like a 50% downtime. That's not bad. There we go. Pops the Lincoln's lasso. Is it going to be enough to kill Sonny? There's the Aegis going out. But there's a Chrono waiting. BKB's popped on the Chosen One and Melee. Sonny jumps back. Oh, oh, he, oh, he, burnt, he burnt, it, burnt it down. The trees are dying. Lorenov gets hit by another flame break. Shapeshift still up for a few seconds. BKB popped up. Lodine gobble up onto melee range. And they get Lodine. 50 seconds. No vengeful spirit does have a buyback in 40. Doesn't aff can't afford it though. Actually, wait. She might be able to afford it because of the reliable gold in her backpack, but still, there's a global looking for the initiation. Nemega need to take this victory here. Xani, there's a chrono right on top of the tuck. It's surrounded by everyone, and there's the refresher shard as well. So even if even if you survive, there will be another one right after. There's the wolf coming in, and a wolf slowing up Petru. Just goes straight for the mid racks. Another Chrono is available. He can surprise them with one quick move. And Nemiga know that this is this is the end for them. 100 seconds without the Morphling. Second lane down. Heading towards bottom. Looking for the Mega Creeps. Aincrad. One last play. One last Blink Lasso goes for it. But the Lincolns came off cooldown. 
The Lincolns was off cooldown there. They couldn't pop it in time. The Lasso, there, he still has it, but he can't get it. Morphling gets the buyback up at the same time. Faces Void getting pushed backwards. A shapeshift coming in through. Another time walks uh, Bash coming out as well. He does have that chrono, and he's going to throw it. And he lands it on three in the top of the fountain. Looking for some kills here, but can they get the Morphling? Yes, they can. Die back. Here goes Slam coming in as well. That's it. That's it over. Gambit, they're forcing every single last buyback from Nemega. But what can they do? They haven't been able to fight against Gambit for quite some time. Every single time after the man advantage with the Aegis, the cheeses. And they just, they're just so far behind in this game that even with this last fight, Gambit, Team Wipe, GG. They take game one. There it is. Uh, it's one of those games where Gambit had the potential chance of winning a lot earlier, but some of their kind of positioning and team fights just kind of let them yeah. down a little bit. 